Okay, so this will be my first attempt at a chatting video that coincides with my ride. Someone actually gave me the idea that it would be cool to talk while riding and do some sort of riding vlog, but I don't really think that I would like to do that because whenever I try to talk when I drive, I definitely find myself losing my train of thought and I feel like for something like riding, I would not want to distract my focus while trying to think of stuff. So anyways, hopefully it doesn't take you out of the element to hear a separate recording of my voice overlaying the ride. Also, I hope it's not weird that there is no audio from the ride. I figured it wouldn't be the best idea to leave sound on because all you'll be hearing is the wind. Just sit back and enjoy the ride with me and we'll talk through some stuff. So the first thing I guess that I can think of is how did I get introduced to Mount Laguna? Mount Laguna was introduced to me by Shane. Mount Laguna was one of the first hikes that I think I ever did in San Diego because Shane introduced me to the area. I don't recall exactly what day we went, but it was relatively early on when I first moved over here. So I'm pretty sure I was most likely still living with Shane at the time. I remember that I actually feel like I had a really good I remember thinking that I actually really liked the area. When we went, it did feel a little deserted. There weren't that many people on the trail, but I do also think that if someone else comes with me on a hiking trip, then I definitely feel less anxious about anything Riley related because if it's somebody I trust that understands my training method, then I feel a little bit more confident because they can just help me advocate for her and I feel like having their presence around also just makes me feel more at ease. So even though Mount Laguna was a place I really liked to hike at, I feel like over time I realized that there are actually quite a lot of people that go there. The thing about Mount Laguna that I'm not too big a fan of is that a lot of the hiking trails tend to be pretty narrow. So it makes it difficult to pass people, especially when I have her with me. And if others have dogs as well, that kind of makes it even worse. Anyways, aside from talking about preference, I guess lately I have also realized that maybe I'm just a really nostalgic person or I relate a lot of things to events in my life. Oddly enough, Mount Laguna actually reminds me of Dan. I feel like I never talked too much about him outside of when he started to become a huge negative impact on my life. So in case people don't watch me regularly, he is someone that I met through WOW about two years ago, I believe. I met him through the Guild Emphasis when I was raiding on Sargeras. And for someone like me, I don't go out of my way to get to know other players. That's just how I've been these past few years because I think I've lost that sense of wanting to socialize and meet new people. So even though I was joining a bunch of different guilds and just meeting people that way through raiding and people talking to me on their own accord, I was still relatively unknown in the guild and I would honestly never talk. I never talked in guild chat. I never talked during raids. I just don't care to get to know the people in the guild. So the reason I say that is just because I feel like the way I met him just tends to surprise me because he reached out to me first. And I think because of my own nature of being really reserved and keeping to myself, whenever people reach out to me and then we get to know each other that way, that always tends to surprise me because they have to take initiative, right? And that's opposite of the type of person I am. So he asked me about doing Mythic Plus because he saw that I was on the Mythic Plus leaderboards for the guild um, throughout the weeks because that was actually something I really liked about Legion. I really enjoyed doing Mythic Plus and that's pretty evident because I put out a ton of videos on it. I'd say at that time, I was still doing a lot of runs with the friends that I had on Burning Legion and they were the people that I was playing with at the start of Legion. So I did have 
a lot of people that I was doing runs with. And I'd say it was relatively high keys, but not as high as I would like if I were being super serious. So anyways, he would see me on the leaderboards and I think he reached out to me to ask if he could play some. So I was like, sure, I think I was pretty welcoming to other people asking to play at the time. And maybe it surprised me that someone asked me to join our group because I think most people don't tend to do that. They kind of maybe wait for you to ask, or if they're shy, um, they will think that maybe you already have a click that you run everything with, so they don't even try to join your group. The thing is about him, I am pretty sure when he asked to play, he was pretty inexperienced in Mythic Plus, and I think he wanted to start getting into it, which is why he asked me. And Maybe the fact that he was geared from raiding and he put out good DPS, I would imagine that was probably why I was willing to take him along and sort of teach him. I think it's more like allowing him to come and eventually he became a regular that I did Mythic Plus with all the time. I think it was really helpful that he was always down to play, he was on often, and we just started grouping up a ton together. So this was around the time when I was looking into moving to San Diego because I distinctly remember that I had to come here for a week because I found this job that wanted me to fly over here and do a week of work with them to trial and see if they like me for the position. So because the entire process of me moving to San Diego was really inspired by Shane convincing me, I was planning on staying at his house. And I remember that during that week I was here, I didn't get any contact information from Dan. So we were still mainly just strictly talking online. Yeah, so I think we were mainly still exclusively talking online through Battle.net. We didn't have each other's discords or anything. So that week, I just remember telling him I would be gone and I remembered missing talking to him. So when I got back, we kind of picked up where we left off and I guess it was about one to two months before I ultimately decided to move out here. And I think I mainly remember that I decided to tell him I liked him after I had already moved out here. So I guess it was kind of a gradual progression. I was thinking about it lately and it is kind of interesting that I have started taking the initiative when it comes to telling someone that I like them. And I think this mainly stems from the fact that maybe over the years I started thinking that it was silly for a girl to always be so passive and that's usually the type of person I am. So when it comes to my last boyfriend, I met him through someone I knew from WoW during BC times that I reconnected with years later. So sorry about this random introduction, but I just kind of wanted to mention this because I have noticed that I do take the initiative to tell someone I like them. So this is just a quick little explanation for it. But I met the person off WoW in person for the first time of many years after I was playing with him a lot during BC times. And he was kind of a person that was labeled more than a friend kind of person when we were playing together. So we met in person and he told me that he had a friend that was going to TI, the International for Dota 2 that year. So I was like, oh shit, that is so cool. And eventually we played some Dota together and his friend ended up being my boyfriend later on. I don't remember how exactly we started talking a little bit more maybe just casual stuff through tells or whispers because we weren't on Discord very often. But I do remember the few times we were on Discord, I just remembered liking his voice. And that is something that over the years, I knew for certain that that was kind of my thing. Um, I think if you play online for a very long time, someone's voice is similar to their identity because you don't know their physical being, right? You just know them online. So their voice is kind of the only thing that you can manage to connect with on the deeper personal level because you have no contact in person. 
So anytime I would come across someone online with a voice I really liked, I just kind of latched onto that. I'm not saying that the only people I liked online were people whose voices I liked, but that was just something that I was attracted to. Um, I liked when I heard a voice that I liked. We started playing Dota together more and I just remembered that at that period of time, he was working a job that was graveyard shift. So it was actually pretty hard for us to talk because he would be on at odd hours and I don't think we were exactly texting each other yet. We were still kind of just Steam buddies or playing Dota. So you don't communicate with each other as much unless you are available to play together. So the few times we were able to play together was weekends. We would play until the morning time at times and it was just a lot of fun during that period i just remembered maybe feeling a little frustrated because i liked him a lot and i was always looking forward to talking to him but i didn't want to tell him or i was waiting for him to maybe make the first move and he did eventually tell me he liked me i didn't find it to make sense to just wait for someone to confess first because why should you be scared about telling someone how you feel about them when the worst that could happen is just they say, oh, I don't really feel the same about you. And I feel like rejection in that form where it's just like, oh, I don't feel the same way is kind of something that you kind of need to learn how to get used to it or learn that you shouldn't really take that so hard. I'm maybe not the best example for something like that because surprisingly for me, anytime I have liked someone, they've usually liked me back. So I don't know if I've necessarily received that much rejection in my life. Maybe one time when I was going through a weird phase in New Jersey where I was using online dating and there was someone that I matched up with that was actually working at my company, but he was in a different department. Holy shit, I am so all over the place with this story. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that guy was just really flaky he changed plans a lot and he honestly didn't really show that much interest in me in that level it kind of felt like he was using me in a sense so me being really anxious and frustrated whenever i was talking to him was kind of just my fault for keeping him around when it was more like he was just kind of talking to me when convenient i think so that is probably the one time where i have felt like true frustration from someone who probably didn't match my level of interest but anyways yeah my last boyfriend was the situation that it inspired me to tell people that i liked them because i've done it twice now i was the one that told dan first and then i also told the guy from dota last year his name was steven and i told him i actually think somewhat early on because i just knew what i felt so I was kind of curious to see if he felt the same way, even though I suspected he did, which he did. Now, we can finally go back to Dan. After I arrived at San Diego and was living with Shane, I lived with him for one month before I moved out. And we were not going through the best times. So I think during that time when we were having our troubles, I started talking to Dan a lot more, or I would just confide in him and he would be a pretty good listener. So that just allowed us to connect much more. I think we were playing and talking to each other for several months before he finally decided to book a flight out here so we could meet. And at that time, I do think that I really liked him, but I think it was also the highs of, you know, getting to know someone or like someone at the early stages. So any of the bad signs you would kind of just not focus on them too much. I do remember feeling extreme annoyance at him. Something he often did was if I, if we were arguing and I kind of just wanted some space away from him, I didn't feel like talking to him, right? Just taking a break from each other. He wouldn't really give me that space. He would nag me through text or he would call me nonstop and that became a bigger problem for his persona than I realized, which I will explain later on. Anyways, after a couple of months, he came by for a couple of days. I don't remember exactly how long his trip was here, but I'd say it was 
in the middle in terms of how it went. But I am talking about him because sometimes when I go to Mount Laguna around that area, it reminds me of him because we went there several times to hike. There was a time when I was really interested in the town of Julian, which is about an hour and a half away from the city, mainly because it was far away and seemed like it would have more of a country landscape, which is something that I really look forward to having. So there was one time where I was just randomly looking at houses there, not to rent, to buy. And he came with me to sort of look at the neighborhood and to see the outside of one of the houses that I saw. And we spent the day there just exploring and we also hiked nearby. So inevitably, I do think of him whenever I'm around that area, which sometimes I honestly don't feel so great about it. I do also think that even if your opinion of someone is not very high, I'd say my opinion on him currently is extremely low. It doesn't necessarily mean that your memories with the person have to also feel the same way. I say that because whenever I do think about him, I think to myself, don't think about this person because you don't really like him, you don't really respect him much as a person, but sometimes it just happens and I think it's okay for you to think of them because maybe you can focus more on the positive memories you have with them rather than the negative ones. I did also think of him recently because I forgot that I actually picked him up from the airport the second time he came. And when I went to pick up my brother at the airport last week, I was like, this feels familiar. Why does it? And then I remembered, oh, right, I did pick him up from the airport when he came. So this was actually around the time of 2017, end of 2017. I decided to cut Dan off around October or November. The gist is just that I got fed up with him as a person around October or November. So I cut him off, but he had planned to move out here because he wanted to be closer. And he was signing up for a coding boot camp. A lot of people seem to be doing that now where they just do a couple of months boot camping for coding and then they find a job that way instead of needing their degree from college. So he moved out here and shortly before he moved out here, I just really stopped liking him. So it was bad timing for that to happen. But at the same time, I was not going to feel obligated to keep him in my life because of him moving here. So when he moved here, it was it was a weird balance, actually, because I just remembered not really wanting to spend any time with him, but he was still trying to reach out to me. But eventually I did get him to leave me alone. He sent me numerous emails, which I showed in my uh, TI video at the end of it. He sent me a lot of emails that I never returned. Yeah, eventually he did die down until he completely stopped. I don't remember if it was me. I think it was me. I might have just messaged him saying like, I hope you're well. And that was mainly it. And maybe we started talking a little bit about WOW because our old guild leader asked me to raid with them again or to play with them. And I was kind of interested in it because my raiding time and emphasis wasn't bad. And we actually got some really good kills. So he mentioned that he was going to join them as well. And then from there, it kind of went slowly downhill where we ended up playing Mythic Plus together. And his expectations were so naive where he just probably still liked me. And I made it very clear that I wanted to just be friends and nothing more. And I also wanted to try to limit my interaction with him because I knew what he was capable of. And... Unfortunately, he still turned out to be the exact same way. So when that happened, that is when I decided to leave the guild and stop playing because there was no point in playing anymore. The game was already in a very bad state. It sucked to leave the guild because I did enjoy playing with some of them. He was kind of really harassing me that past week or 
two weeks from when I decided to block him again. I think overall just interacting with him was just super toxic experience and whenever I think about his level of lack of self-awareness, I feel like it's just dangerous because they can't think about how they are affecting you. I think he always just focused on me trying to prevent him from communicating with me and me doing that meant he had to come on even more strong and force it. So very, very bad experience. I actually think, I used to think one of my ex-boyfriends was one of my most unpleasant encounters with people that I became close with. But I'd say Dan is probably up there. Number one or two. I'd say the guy from Dota last year is probably up there as well. The thing about the guy from Dota, sometimes I do feel like talking about him, but I guess don't know what purpose it would bring because I would just mainly end up talking about a lot of his flaws or the issues we had and it's been so long. It's already been a year since that happened. Actually, it is basically a year because I remember that we were talking a lot in April and then maybe towards the end of it going into May was when I told him I can't do this anymore. Sometimes I have certain songs that remind me of life events and I'm sure a lot of other people have this as well but I have a couple songs that I like that I sometimes listen to and automatically think of him because those were the songs I listened to after we stopped talking and he was just a very interesting case because I don't think I've ever had a situation where I somehow still really liked the person, but I knew I had to cut them off because he was actually, I don't know if I want to say he wasn't a good person, but he was kind of cruel in what he said to me at times. I'm actually surprised I lasted so long because anytime he would disagree with me, he would be pretty condescending in his tone. And we had so many communication issues. I think it was... Aside from Dan, he was the most frustrating person I've ever talked to. On the other hand, he was also really pleasant to talk to when it came to gaming or if we were kind of being like lovey-dovey with each other. So often, we would talk about the most mundane, minor things and he would end up kind of turning it into an argument because of the way he spoke to me. And I didn't like that. I think during that time, I knew that I probably should cut it off, but I was having trouble with following through with it. I remember just times where I would send him stuff like maybe we should take a break from each other for a day or two, but I wouldn't be able to follow through with that because there were times where I really enjoyed talking to him. One distinct memory I have of him, which is probably the moment I really should have just stopped talking to him completely. I remember that I made this video last year and I said that Shane told me about this, I forget what it was called, but it was some blue thing that you could see along the beach. I think it was jellyfish. I don't remember, but it was, oh, plankton, I think. So basically there was this phenomenon, or I don't know if that's the right word to use, but during that period of time, if you go to the beach, you could see it glowing blue and it was really pretty apparently. I saw pictures of it in a news article. That night I had planned on going and we weren't really talking that day because the thing that with our arguments is that I would tell him, please don't do this because it's not right what you believe. So something he often did that I talked about in a video shortly after, I would say something in a very neutral tone. He would receive it as me giving him an attitude or being angry. So he would just say like, please calm down, stop being angry. And eventually when someone says that to you enough times when you're really not uh, feeling that way emotionally, it starts to piss you off, right? Because they are completely misreading the intent of your message. And I feel like throughout the entirety of my time talking to him, I would try to make sure that anytime something started going downhill in our conversation, I would you know, make sure I speak very neutral so that I don't make the situation worse. But he would often say, you know, you're angry, you need to calm down. And I told him to stop doing that, but he would always do that. That became a ver very big issue with our arguments. And I think it was also a key reason why I sort of held a grudge 
with him for a while where I would just, you know, go a whole day not wanting to talk to him because it was really hard for me to resume talking to him because I knew that he wouldn't really learn from the argument. I knew that the same stuff would continue happening and that his apologies wouldn't actually mean anything. They were just an apology to resume talking again. It didn't really serve a purpose. So that night, I hadn't talked to him all day, and then I was still kind of agitated about what we had just been arguing about. So I sent him a message, and I guess it was kind of passive aggressive. We were not being very friendly with each other that night, and he was playing a game of Dota, I think. So he got really angry at me, and he called me a dumbass bitch. And then after that point, we were basically just insulting and cursing at each other nonstop. But I was really surprised he called me that because, yeah, that's just not something you say to someone you care about, right? And that's actually extremely hostile. So I remember that night when I was there waiting at the beach. I think I was waiting there for about 45 minutes and nothing ended up happening. While I was waiting at the beach, I had already blocked him on Discord. That was the way we normally talked. And I was just feeling sad about the whole situation. And even though I did try to break it off with him that night, unfortunately, took him back because he apologized and whatever. I uh, do tend to think of him when I think about going to the beach and what happened that night. That was just pretty surprising, actually. My interaction with him was really surprising because you kind of realize that sometimes you really just can't be with someone because of the way they are. So I'm sure that there is some woman out there who likes being talked down to or finds him to be the most amazing person in the world. But I think that after my interaction with him, I started becoming way more wary about someone's tone when they talk down to you. So admittedly, sometimes my coworker does that and I notice it every time. So whenever he does it to me, I give him an attitude back because that's really like the only thing I can do, right? I feel like even if it's just a change of tone, it does in some way help you stand up for yourself compared to if you were just calm and being nice while they're talking down to you which is what I've noticed other people doing that has become something that I know I will never want to put up with they are pretty much the last two people I've had interactions with in the romance department and they were not the most pleasant I have had some pretty bad luck when it comes to that, but it doesn't actually bother me that much. There have been times lately where I see like a random guy in public that I come across and I think, you know, I kind of miss the embrace of a man, but stuff like that, you can't really rush it. I actually do think I would have a hard time adjusting to interacting with someone in that sense again, because you do end up spending a lot of time together, right? And I spend so much of my time by myself. I'm so used to that, that even sometimes when I plan on seeing someone for a part of the day, it feels a little bit outside of my element because it's a plan that I can't just change on a whim because it's with somebody else. And it's not, I'm not saying that I want to be flaky or anything, but sometimes I just feel a little bit anxiety when I have to go through with those plans. For now, I've been doing pretty good as normal. I have some really exciting times coming up when it comes to my road trips. Even though New Mexico is coming up, which I'm sure I will really enjoy, Montana is the big one that I am super excited for because I just imagine so much green, lush fields, mountains. The Grand Tetons seems like it will be a really, really nice destination as well. And honestly, I'm pretty excited that I will be able to use my laptop with internet this time around because to be honest I have never tethered or used hotspot on my phone before and I think the main reason for that is because whenever I try to in the past it would say some sort of setting like oh it's not turned on it's disabled you have to contact customer service or something so I just never bothered because I never had a reason to but recently 
I thought about it again because a lot of my Airbnbs don't have Wi-Fi. So when I went to Vancouver, I did have Wi-Fi at that apartment, but I didn't have a laptop. So I was pretty bored, I guess, most nights. I was on my phone almost the whole time, and I think it was entertaining decently enough, but I didn't really like doing that, and I didn't want to have to do that for my long trip to Montana or even to New Mexico for five days. So I managed to get it sorted out. I had, I did have to contact customer service for it to be enabled on my phone, and it worked really well in Joshua Tree when I was with my brother. So I am pretty hopeful that it will help a lot with me <laughs> enjoying my vacation because even if I'm exploring the whole day and I'm out, I obviously will not be playing that much during the day unless I am that worn out. But there's something that's really exciting to me about possibly sitting out on the deck, staring out at all these mountains and maybe the sunset and just playing chess. Like I know that sounds silly, but I think one of my new dreams or aspirations is to just have the ability to mix both of those passions together, nature and gaming. Because anytime I'm indoors playing a game and I see that it's such a beautiful day outside, I just always wish that I could enjoy that nice weather at the same time while playing my game. So since I'll be having a laptop and the Montana Airbnb has a balcony that goes around the entire house, I think on the second floor and the first floor might have space to sit as well. I am looking forward to trying that out and I feel like I'd really enjoy it. May is still a whole month away and we have New Mexico first and New Mexico is coming very soon. I'm really curious to see what kind of culture and dances or performances I'll see at the powwow. I bought some VIP tickets for that one so I will have pretty good seats. I was not able to get front row surprisingly because well, actually, I think I did get front row, but I did not get one in the center. I had to get it kind of off center, which I was a little surprised about because sometimes I just feel like for an event like this, very few people know about it, right? So why would those seats be taken already? Or why would people buy the tickets so early? But people definitely did. Also, something else I plan on checking out, there is this place called Meow Wolf. It's an exhibition, I think for art that Shane told me about. He said that his friend went there recently and that he thought the experience was really cool. So when I looked up Meow Wolf, people do have very positive things to say about it. It's located in Santa Fe and it is about an hour away from my Airbnb, which is fine. I wouldn't mind taking that drive by myself and then maybe check out some stuff along the way back or something. I am assuming that by now the ride footage is nearly done. I think mainly when it comes to personal stuff, it feels weird to talk about it because it's a divide, I guess, because obviously people do like reading gossip, right? Or they like to read a bit more about people's personal lives. But I think from my perspective, I tend to feel like, why would they want to know about this? Why would they want to hear about this? And that's what makes me feel a little awkward for talking about it. So <laughs> hopefully it did not come out awkward and hopefully it doesn't sound awkward to listen to me talk about that stuff. When it comes to riding though, I do think that it would be so nice to eventually ride with a significant other, preferably on their own bike, of course. <laughs> I've never taken a passenger before, but whenever I see people riding in twos or even in a group, I don't envy people riding in a group. I just like the idea of sharing that activity with people you like, right? So I would not do meetups for riding because that just feels like when you go to random smash events, right? It's not enjoyable for me to play against strangers. Like the fun of an activity is to do it with people you like or your significant other. So sometimes I think about how nice it would be to ride with someone. That's something I've actually never done before. I've never ridden with anybody even one other person. Maybe I'll have that eventually. But I think for my next ride, I will probably record going to get pie. 
that will be probably after New Mexico. I kind of forced this ride because I was so eager to try out my GoPro. And I do think the quality turned out to be really great. An issue I was having though is that the GoPro actually forces my helmet to angle downwards. That was something that was becoming extremely annoying on the highway because when I'm going at faster speeds, the wind probably pushes against my GoPro, which dangles a little bit underneath my helmet. So that added weight just makes my helmet tilt forward and it was starting to block a little bit of my vision at the top. So I might try to figure out if I could position my GoPro in a different way where it's not actually peeking out underneath my helmet. I was thinking if it stays entirely within the chin area of the helmet, hopefully it won't do that tilting aspect. I haven't done a talking video in a while. I uh, hope people enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the wonderful scenery and enjoyed learning more about me and what I've been through. So I will see you guys in the next video. And thank you for watching and listening. Goodbye.